send and do questions today. Okay, nice. So go that way. All right. Um, I'm Mary Beth McMahon. I'm from Starry Mag. Yeah. I'm Mackenzie Morell. I'm from FanFest.com. I'm Jamie Secor from the Geeky Area. I'm Danielle Mick from Leading Cool. And I'm Trisha Ennison from Blaster Fangirls. Excellent. All right. Um, this one's for Elise. How has Laura's love for Carmilla really helped her form a different look at both herself and the world? Ooh, just starting off with the big <laughs> right. one. Yeah. 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 Uh, how has Laura's love for Carmilla helped shape her view of the world? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh boy. Um, <laughs> I, I think... Um, I think Laura's love for Carmela has changed so much from season one to season three. Uh, we were just talking over there a bit about how season one was a bit more of infatuation. It was a bit more of, uh, you know, lust and tension and chemistry. And um, and and then season two was uh, that period of, of really kind of like getting to know the person underneath that. Um, and then season three is about um, accepting those those parts of a person and accepting everything and and uh, and knowing that there's always room for growth like accepting accepting yourself and accepting other people doesn't mean that change can never happen it just means that I have to first accept and know who I am to decide if that's what I want to live with and so I think um, I think you know in season two, Laura puts a lot of blame on Carmilla, and Laura puts a lot of um, uh, like negative energy towards Carmilla. And then, you know, I think if, if you ever are in conflict with someone, and if you are ever placing blame towards another person, it's because you're not accepting that those things are also in yourself. And so I think the thing, the thing that you know Laura really learns, and that Carmilla really teaches her, is that. Um, like there's, there's always a gray line, and uh, and that in order to to see everyone as a human and to see everyone in this sort of like even playing field, you have to accept all the things in yourself as well. Um, yeah, that's such a huge question. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's awesome. I love it. Like um, I don't know. Is there anything you want to add to that? Like. I yeah. And it's your character. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think that was a big a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously we get to meet Laura's dad this season. Do you think that him being kind of present in it hindered the relationship or the growth of it? You know, how did how did your characters feel about that being thrown into the mix? Hindered Laura Hind and Carmela's yeah, relationship. Carmel and Laura. Yeah. I think it actually helps Laura and Carmela's relationship a lot because I think uh, I think yeah. Laura's dad is sort of like the final um, representation and piece of of her like sort of like birth into this new person and this mm -hmm. new woman and um, I think you know sort of letting go of your parents is that final step mm -hmm. and um, and I think that just sort of like propels Laura forward into knowing that like this is a relationship that she wants to invest in and uh, and be her best self in. Yeah. yeah, I think at first Carmilla is obviously a little annoyed that he's there, probably because she has some sexy plans and he's getting in the way of them, but uh, also because, um, you know, he's so protective of her. and. And Carmilla wants to protect her as well, but I think Carmilla did learn how to let Laura go a little bit as well and realize that she, she is growing up and that she is her own woman. Um, but I think their, their mutual love for Laura and their, their want to protect them um, ends up making them friends. And I think it was really neat for Carmilla to also see pieces of Laura's past and understand her that she wouldn't have known unless he had shown up because mm -hmm. they had this sort of moment and in my mind you only see it for a second but in my mind they cracked open a bottle of scotch and he showed her baby pictures and, <laughs> you know they had like a <laughs> a fun bonding time so yeah That's awesome. um a lot of the action takes place off camera so if you guys could film any of the off-camera events which ones would you want to film oh, wow from any season 
I think. Oh, I was gonna say there's there's a moment in season two where I come back and there's blood all over my face <laughs> and I've gone on like this killing spree and I really would love to just do that. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see Carmilla as like a warrior when she's just out yeah. there, just like using her crazy vampire strength and tearing things up. <laughs> I think for me, uh, in season one, when Laugh and Laura go to the library for the first time, oh, yeah. and they make an improvised flamethrower, <laughs> and the computers are all screaming, run, run now. Being in the whirlwind of that, I think, would have been really fun to film. Yeah. So you spent like two seasons always talking about the library, so what was it like to actually film there? It was so magical. It was so much fun. I'm really glad that we got to finally see it. Yeah. And I think there are just so many adorable little lighting tricks that we use that really give it this sense of the sort of Harry Potter-esque yeah. feel that I really loved. And it was really neat to, to see that magical door because they, yeah. they rigged it with lights. Like it was just so interesting to even just see the process of how they did it and how they used a lot of just old Hollywood tricks versus that they probably used in the 40s versus yeah. you know special effects so yeah that was really fun yeah it was a fun character to play off of yeah totally like you just said it, it sort of becomes a character in itself this season um and so like being in that environment just added to like added a whole new layer to how we existed in the space it was really yeah. fun um, now, in the second season, definitely, and a little bit in the first season, um, Laura is very much the gung-ho hero, I want to save everybody, and, and Carmilla is like, can we just stay here and not die? <laughs> um, whereas this season, Carmilla has to sort of play that role and get Laura to do anything. Yeah. Um, what was it like to have to play that for Carmilla, who still kind of doesn't want to die? <laughs> um, I think... I, I dare say that Carmilla does not care if she dies in season three. I think that she, because Laura, now that there, it was, I think it was really fun and interesting to play that sort of role reversal. And now Laura is the one saying, you know, Carmilla, you might get yourself killed, and Carmilla is willing to to do that to save her friends and to save Laura, which is really interesting. Um, I think that Carmilla has just finally had enough of of her mother and and. Carmilla really becomes so um, empathetic in, in such an interesting, beautiful way. Um, I think she still has, she's still a little blasé about certain things, and she's sort of like, well, we're just going to kill her now, that's the way it's going to go. Um, but, you know, so she hasn't lost her character, but she definitely has some drive and some motivation, and, and um, yeah, it actually made acting a lot easier, because then there was something to, to, to drive me in something behind all of the text, so. Um, Camar Camilla's only family has really been her mom, the Dean, and Maddie. What does seeing Laura's relationship with her father and friends show her um, about what family actually means? Oh, I think she learns a lot. In that moment that she says, you know, well, he's proud of you, you know, my father wasn't. And I think Carmilla's been very alone in the world for the most part, aside from Maddie. Um, she obviously has some other vampire siblings. I think she had Will, and I don't think they were very close. I think, <laughs> yeah, they sort of butt heads. Um, but uh, I think Maddie's the closest thing that she had to to a mentor or to you know a parent parent figure. And, and she's her older sister, but in many ways she was like a, a, a mother to her. And um, yeah. Uh, this is a great question. I think she, it's not just, just seeing Sherman, but I think even seeing how Laura interacts with her friends has taught something about family and how it, family can be, uh, can be your friends and can be what you create yourself. <laughs> So obviously the stakes are pretty high this season. Um, if you guys had to choose, uh, well, each of you choose four talismans to represent your personality that would like unlock oh, some no. secret about you, Whoa. what would you choose? <laughs> and it could just be anything. Whoa. Like it doesn't have to be anything. It's like such four talismans. <laughs> like great. four things that I had yeah. to put my such mm -hmm. a great question. Oh my goodness. And then you have to tell us the secret after you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <sighs> 
that's a good question. I have to think about it. Mine would be a yoga mat. <laughs> a yoga mat. Um, what else? Um, probably like a, a bit of like a tree branch or something. <laughs> um, they're so good and they make sense. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, maybe a, a like a book on acting. Um, maybe Stanislavski's book. And then... Building a character? Or uh, no? An actor prepares. Mm. And then... What else? Uh, and... Final one. I know, it's really hard. I'm having an existential crisis right now. All of a sudden, I'm like, <laughs> who am I? <laughs> and then, um, hmm, maybe like, I don't know, like some sort of like family heirloom that I can't think of right now that I'm sure exists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like mine would be like a very ancient piece of sheet music Ooh. yeah super cool some sort of handwritten piece of sheet music one <laughs> two maybe like uh kind of like a like a deck of tarot cards mm-hmm. um perhaps like I just I'm realizing I'm just a witch. I was like, <laughs> I, was like That's I don't your like secret. a broom, yeah. maybe. I was like, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I was like, can it be anything to be alive? Like a newt. Like, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I had a pet newt for most of my life growing up. I believe it. Just like a newt. Yeah. A newt. And maybe like, oh gosh. I keep on just oh. picturing a stone. I, I feel like that's, that's pretty what on I was, the nose, but a stone. Is that's what I was thinking as yeah. well. Like something, I have a really big crystal collection at home. So yeah. I feel like some kind of crystal. Yeah. Gemstone thing. Now if that we was like a lead red or something. Possessed or anything. Mm, you know, you yeah. all know how to kill us now. <laughs> um, how do you guys get into character? Like do you have a specific ritual or like music that you listen to? Or Oh. No specific ritual. The only specific ritual I have is that I am really organized and always buy like a new binder and a new set of highlighters when I get my scripts and I keep them really organized. That's something that I've always done, whether I'm doing theater or film and television. Um, mm, I like keeping Carmilla pretty languid, so I try not to get too much sleep or oversleep. I actually like when um, my voice is a little tired sounding for her, like I'll purposely be a bit tired and not sleep, um, just to kind of keep her, like, loose and gravelly. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, for me, something awesome about season three this year was that our characters were already there. Like, we, like we've already done so much yeah. work on that, and uh, this year I felt a lot more freedom to play around on set. Mm-hmm. Um, and because we film at such a rapid pace, sometimes that's not easy to do. Um, <laughs> but uh, so for me this year, um, it, it was a lot about just relaxing before we went into filming because, um, you know, there's there's not a lot of time. And so you really just wanted to be dropped in as soon as the camera started rolling. And so for me, it's just a lot of like really deep breathing, deep low breathing, yeah. and uh, and really making sure that I'm uh, there connecting with the other actors. Um, Caitlin and I would give each other massive hugs every morning before we started rolling, just to sort of ground ourselves and, and remember like, oh yeah, like heart to heart, like our hearts touching, like that's what this is about, like acting is about connecting. Yeah. Um, and, and not being so like up in your brain and, and stressed and like so just even just like remembering to relax my shoulders and it's funny because Carmilla's pretty elusive in some ways and aloof so I'd actually spend a lot more time by myself on set when I prepare for her less so in season three because she is sort of part of the gang but 
um, you know, when I'm doing something that's like a comedy or playing a different sort of character, I'm really like goofy on set and we'll sort of like, you know, not, not prank people, but like, you know, fool <laughs> around and laugh and joke and be part of the crowd. But with Carmilla, I definitely kind of like lurk around in the shadows and like spat and, and, had, and spend a lot, and have a lot of quiet time. But before our scenes together, we always make sure we like, you know, it's something weird. It sounds so strange is touching people's hair. Because yeah. it's such a like intimate thing. You normally, when you meet someone, you don't just like touch their head or touch their hair. So I always feel like before, like so now you know on on yeah, sets, just Natasha's just, just like lurking hair. like a cat <laughs> in, in the shadows, shadows and just fondling everyone. Yeah. So that's how you are now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am such a cat. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so um, I think like the type of music you listen to says a lot about a person. So what kind of music do you think? Carmilla and Laura listen to, and does it differ from your own style of music that you listen to? Who are your favorite bands? Yeah. Ooh, let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. <laughs> I think Carmilla listens to a lot of classic rock, but also secretly digs Baroque music when <laughs> she was around, and that is exactly the same as me. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I don't know about Laura. Um... Like, I feel like she probably, likes like, female, like, yeah, like, music, yeah, like, singer songwriting. Yeah. Like but she probably also grew up listening to a lot of her dad's music, I would imagine. Like, oh my god, like, Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel, or, like, James Taylor. Like, I grew James up listening Taylor. to Sting, totally. Bruce Coburn, and James Taylor, because my dad. Sherman Hollis for like, sure listens to James, James Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So there was probably a bit of that. Um, but yeah, she's probably also going to be, like, more modern. I listen to everything. I really like everything. Yeah. Um, I just hate that answer, but you know, I'm like, I listen to everything, but it is sort of true. It is true. Like, there are yeah. things that I gravitate towards. Yeah. But. I do love R&B stuff, and, um, but then I also love, like, yeah, I just like everything. <laughs> I listen to a lot of, like, oldie timey. Oldie timey. Oldie timey. <laughs> oldie timey, like, uh, ragtime music, and... Yeah. When I say everything, I mean everything except for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like a lot of like Ella Fitzgerald and like oh, yeah. Showboat. And, like, Actually, I, and I, I don't think Carmel would listen to that. We were just yeah. in LA and Natasha was getting ready and all of a sudden a lot of musical theater just started playing and I was like, this explains so much about you. Oh yeah, it was like a playlist where it popped up and yeah. Mark and you It was like her. rent. <laughs> yeah, like, like, what the <laughs> hell is this? And I was like, shut up. <laughs> this is great. Your high school theater nerd is showing. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so we're about to hit the final act of season three, the final, final everything of Carmilla. Um, what are you, if you are allowed to say, most excited for or what are you allowed to tell us about this final moment for your characters. Ooh. It looks really good. So awesome. The cinematography is going to be really interesting. So great. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, 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 it's cool to see characters um, in the final push. I mean, it, really, like, everything is at stake in the third act, and yeah. the world is about to end, and it's interesting to see um, characters in the most extreme and desperate of times, like what they are willing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Don't get too much away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I weaseled spoilers out of them. So I'm to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, just um, uh, yeah, seeing characters push to their extremes and push to their. They're all very brave. Yeah. When you read the script for the final episode, what surprised you or stood out the most to you? As well as, was there an overall feeling of sadness or a genuine pride or bittersweetness? I bittersweet. Like, went into it knowing that it was the final season. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, that, like, I think probably for the, the last five episodes, I mean, I was curled up in a fetal position on my couch just bawling reading these things because it really did feel like the end of an era. Yeah. It, it felt like and we've been able to, you know, get all the scripts at once and read it as a fan would um, and experience it like that and experience the story that way and so 
it was really similar to when I was reading the final chapter of the Harry Potter book. You know, it's such like a, I, I remember being in my tent camping with my family and refusing to leave the tent to go for a hike because I was like, I have to finish this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it is like the, it's the end of, um, of an era and we grew up with these characters just like other people grew up with the characters, so. Yeah, it was definitely bittersweet because there's a sense of completion with it and we knew it was always a three season arc. So it's very satisfying and there's a lot of payoff, which is really quite lovely, but also the, the bitter part comes of just being like, comes from, you know, not really wanting it to be over, but knowing it is and, and it's both good and bad. Have you guys, you know, like settled into your internet fame yet? I'm always curious to know if you've had a memorable fan interaction or something weird that's happened in person or on social media. Yeah, we've had so many memorable fan moments. I mean, most recently, I think I said this in an interview recently, but, you know, we received this this book of just hundreds of comments from people around the world who didn't have a chance to go to Fan Expo, and someone bound it together and gave it to all of the cast members, and that was so touching, and it's something that I'll always treasure and have, and that's so wonderful, and I think, you know, any time I interact with a fan, it's, it's, it's very pleasant, and it's, it's really nice to do something that's meaningful to people because so often you just take what you can get as a young actor and it's nice to do something that actually has a social responsibility and that we see truly touches people so it's difficult to choose just one fan moment but I think we have settled into our internet fame a little bit like for me I've settled into it I've gotten used to it and I've learned how to navigate it it took some time and it's still always very surreal in some ways but now we sort of know how to to do things I mean I definitely I would say like I post a lot uh, fewer personal things now and it is kind of nice to um, to disconnect from social media I used to feel the need to take pictures every time I went to a restaurant or every time I hung out with someone and now because I am in the public eye I don't do that and it's actually kind of liberating because now I will take photos just for me like mm -hmm. yeah, d yes yeah. I don't know if you saw people were asking me on Twitter where's Elise where's Elise and the funny thing was we spent the whole night together yeah. we had dinner we went shopping <laughs> and we just didn't post about yeah, it and it was sort of nice yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I know I think that's been something that I have to wrap my head around is that what you see online is just snippets it's not the whole story yeah. ever and there's no way to ever get the whole story online it's, I think you can do your best to just um, you know be yourself yeah. on social media but um, like that kind of takes the pressure off a little bit though knowing yeah. that unless I'm walking around with a GoPro on my head the entire duration of a day, nobody's gonna get the full like breadth of my life and that's yeah. okay. Sometimes it's <laughs> frustrating in a way because you're like, oh no, like you'll see comments and you're like, that's not who I am or what yeah. I mean, but then you just sort of have to let it go and it's, it's taught me to be a lot less critical of like celebrities that are way more famous than us because we're just like, wow, we have this tiny scale of things, and then when I look at them, it's like, you, you can't be judgmental or read tabloids, because now I totally understand, I'm like, wow, that's probably not them at all, yeah. because yeah. some of the stuff isn't really me, I mean, we try to be yeah. as genuine as possible on our own social media, but, you know, the way, you have no control over how people interpret it, Yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. So I'm just, I know we've done two questions here, well, this will be the last round, but then okay. we, uh, sure, get, yeah. we'll do the last three here, and uh, do a quick photo, and kind of the step and repeat, awesome. and then head down, meet you guys at the panel. Yeah, yeah. 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 great, that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> do we have time to pee? Yes. <laughs> great. No, you have to eat. <laughs> um, if you guys could remake any movie together, what would it be? Mm. Oh, together. together. Mm. You always hate this answer, but I feel like lesbian Greece would just be yes. hilarious. Yes. yes. I know. I know you're so sick funny. of playing the sweet character. <laughs> um, oh man. Maybe maybe we could do some old school. Um, I want to do something like action adventure with you. 
like um, mm. I'm trying to think. Charlie's like, Angels. Like Charlie's Angels. <laughs> <laughs> or like, I think I want to do something with you when we're like in our seventies. Yeah, like <laughs> like Frankie and Gracie. Yeah, yeah Grace yeah, and Frankie. Yeah. Like where it's like, oh, here are these actors who worked together when they were really young and starting out. Yeah, they have not worked together forever, and they'll yeah. be like return and, and just do something totally like we'll pull a revolutionary road. Yeah. Like Leo and Kate from Titanic, yeah. and we'll just do something like we'll just go dark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my answer. If you have to play another character in Carmilla, who would you want to play? Mm. I used to say Maddie. And, but I feel like the Dean would be really fun to play. Also However, I just Dean. don't think that I could play Harry. So probably Maddie. Yeah. I think I'd love to play the Dean. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of other characters, the uh, supporting cast has gotten a lot more stuff to do this season. Yeah. So what's that been like, being able to actually like play off of, especially the Dean, um, this season? It's oh, been it's been great. Awesome. Like, uh, for they me, both killed it. yeah, um, probably the most boring thing for me to do as an actor is stand in front of a camera and mm -hmm. talk. <laughs> like, it, it's just so boring for me. Um, the best is when you get to act with other people. Um, and uh, so that was, I mean, and I think the writers did such an amazing job this year of, like, bringing so many storylines. Everything has a purpose. Everyone um, has a motivation. Yeah, Everything and so um, I just feel like the story as a whole is just so strong this year and everyone's part yeah. in it is so important. Um, and, I mean, we get to work with an amazing cast, so like, let's obviously give them amazing yeah. things to do and say. Caitlin's also doing such a great job. They've really come into their own and it's been really fun playing off of them and being sort of bros, like Laugh and Carmilla are sort of bros this season, and it, it, it's, it's really interesting just because Carmilla uh, generally is sort of in the background lurking around and only really interacts with Laura, so it's yeah. been nice to, to play with new I people. think that's one of my favorite things about this season is that Carmilla has shedding. friends other than, like, yeah. Laura's really the only human that she's been interested mm -hmm. in, and I think it's so important that Carmilla Cam has other people, mm -hmm. and, like, I love that friendship between that are humans, and humans, yeah. So yeah, totally. Yeah. Cool. So I think that's, that's it. Amazing. So if anyone wants to take a photo 